What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel and welcome back into the Pittsburgh Pirates franchise here on MLB The Show 22. I hope that you guys will leave a like on the video down below before we begin today because trust me, it was not easy getting my setup up and running and I still don't think I have it up and running properly, but nonetheless, I don't want to hold you guys up too much before we actually get into the content today. For whatever reason, this new capture card seems to want to be defaulting to like 720p or something like ridiculously low quality and I noticed it in my last video for whatever reason it's defaulting to potato graphics so hopefully you guys will leave a like and hopefully you'll also let me know down in the comment section whether the graphics are looking good enough in this video recording or not until I get the opportunity to, to watch it back but nonetheless we're going to be continuing directly off of the last video where we made a couple of moves to the roster and just to recap those real quick essentially we moved on from from Michael Chavis and Rugnit Odor at second base in the interests of getting Nick Gonzalez up to the majors and finally getting Cole Tucker his final shot with our major league team just to see what he can do and how he's progressed with his bat to this point. And in doing so, we were able to bring back relief pitcher James Karinchak, which I'm really excited about. And we were also able to bring in a swap at left field for a couple of prospects in Lazaro Armenteros, who I think is a pretty interesting prospect prospect for us that's very athletic with a little bit of power and a pretty solid bat to boot. So let's see how all of those pieces play out and really I want to get into some of those pieces today. What I plan on doing is I plan on advancing a few games and then getting into a little bit of gameplay especially with Nick Gonzalez at second base and hopefully potentially some of those other players as well. This actually is going to work out perfectly because simulating through these first two games we were able to get an 8-1 to one win, a 6-2 to two win, and we're now playing with JT Brubaker on the mound, who I don't care to really play with too much at this point. We'll see if he can give us a good start, but nonetheless, the other important aspect is now Andrew McCutcheon is off the injured list, so we'll get an opportunity to get a few at-bats with a couple of players that we've been looking forward to utilizing. So, without further ado, I'm going to jump into the game, get everything ready for us, and you guys will get to see a little bit of gameplay with Nick Gonzalez, especially coming up to the major leagues. Nick Gonzalez up to bat first with us. You can see he already has a 250 batting average in the couple of games that we simulated. So we'll see if we can't get any decent production with him. 0-2 count early to start here in his uh, first at-bat in our uh, streams. I think that's going to drop in for a hit. It is. Nick Gonzalez going to get a single. Able to get that one to drop in just in front of the right fielder. So Nick Gonzalez... Showing that bat and showing why we decided to bring him up to the majors already producing more for us in I mean, it's a short sample size, but already looking a little bit better so far than Michael Chavis or Odor ever did in our Pirates uniforms. We also have Cole Tucker up to bat in very short order. We put these two at the front of the order just to get them started early see if we couldn't get anything going with them and then potentially if they're on base we can bring them in with O'Neill Cruz and uh, Brian Reynolds 1-1 one, one count now no outs they're thinking we're going to steal with Gonzalez I really wasn't giving it any attention though he does have some decent stealing ability there is a chance we could get a stolen base with him we're going to get underneath of that one, but pop it up to the center fielder. Cole Tucker not able to make anything out of that pitch, which was pretty much given to us in a good position. We might as well show the entire lineup here a little bit, or at least parts of the lineup. We're going to go ahead and take a bat with Mason Martin. Have yet to get you guys many highlights with Mason Martin, even though he's been playing really well for us. Two eighty two so far on the season for Martin. Ooh, almost able to come down to that sinker. He's going to pop one up to the catcher, though, and that's going to result in four straight outs for the Pirates. Miguel Sano able to get on base on an error leaves us with another man on first situation. Going to bat into a double play here, though. It looks like no. They're going to choose not to go for the double play. Henry Davis again gets on top of a fa uh, sinker, I think it was, or circle change. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plant our PCI lower in the zone. 
and wait for something to come to us. Nick Gonzalez finally back up the bat. They're loving to send us those balls down and inside. I think we're going to be able to get something out of it. We just got to be patient. Two one count now. There's a really well hit ball. Nick Gonzalez again. And a good throw to the cutoff man. Not going to be able to drive a run in. But Nick Gonzalez now two for two on the game. Hits that sinker really well. You can hear the pop off of the bat. And gets that one in for another much better hit single than the first time around. Oh, we're going to bat into a double play again. I should have anchored my PCI to the bottom. We're going to come away with no runs after Cole Tucker gets on top of another pitch down in the zone. So far, a pretty solid outing by JT Brubaker. Honestly, a little bit surprising how well he has performed so far, but Brian Reynolds was able to draw a walk, and this brings O'Neill Cruz back up to bat. A lot of damage can be done here with these two guys in the lineup. Back to back, they are very, very powerful hitters. Not able to get on top of anything today, but we're going to keep looking for it. Another one popped to the catcher, and he is able to get to that one. So one out in the fourth inning now. Going to bring up Mason Martin yet again. So it looks like he's mostly favoring down and inside against all of our batters. So if we look at that spread from this time around, he was going down and inside to Mason Martin. Somewhat typical for a... Uh, for a contact pitcher, a ground ball pitcher. Oh yeah, we're going to be able to get a base on that one at least. And unfortunately, we were swinging through such a bad pitch and we weren't swinging on the first one that was up in the zone. That is going to place a man on second base though with an 0-2 count. I really thought I got down to that sinker, but apparently not. That one's going to go right by us. Swung too late on it. We were just about where we wanted to be. We are struggling against Mats today. Steven Mats has been doing a good job of keeping us on our toes. Another decently struck ball going to result in another out. And here's where we get into a really tough situation. Brubaker, I notice, has got the bases loaded with no outs. So what we're doing, we're loading up uh, our, or warming up, I should say, our new pitcher. And we're going to try to pitch some pitches down into the zone and try to come away with a positive, uh, positive outcome here. Maybe a double play or something like that. Looks like this is going to score a run. We're going to throw that one home. Doesn't quite have the arm to make that throw, so that is going to be a sack fly and give them the one to nothing lead. Now a man on first and a man on third. Going to check the bullpen again to see if Karinchak is ready to go. He's not. Let's go ahead with a mound visit. And let's get him out here and ready to go. Your attention, please. See if we can't utilize him to get through some tough work right here. And just see what he has to offer. So he's got a 98 mile per hour fastball, a two seamer that's 97 miles per hour. And if I'm not mistaken, it looked like a curveball as well in his repertoire. Knuckle curve. Ooh, we got him to swing at that one. Not able to make the double play. That ball was so weakly hit, I thought I was going to be able to make that play and just unfortunately unable to. So basically a swinging bunt on that one. Probably should have had the out over at first base. Not Karinchak's fault. Now it's time to come back at him with the knuckle curve. Ooh. 
And another ball by Karinchak. Has not been getting the calls and has not been controlling his pitches as well as I would like him to. Those pitches are just going nowhere near the zone at this point. It's honestly kind of surprising to me. There we go. A lucky call on that one. Curveball into the zone. Let's go with the two seam. And we're able to get the strike out. Good job by Karinchak. Able to get the strike out. Hopefully we can limit the damage. So it looks like he's just got a lot of break on his fastballs. Because even when we hit the bar perfect right there, we got good timing on that one. It went, uh, it went a good two ball lengths away from where we were actually throwing it. Able to get the strike out that time, limiting the damage to two runs. But we really have not been able to get anything going on offense here, unfortunately. And that's going to do it. We are going to go down in this one 4-1. to one. Not a whole lot of offensive production. We did get a pretty solid performance, though, out of Nick Gonzalez. We weren't able to get any production with Cole Tucker. Much more of the same out of him. So... You know, he's he's really uh, looking like he's he's potentially working his way out of the organization, uh, unfortunately for us. So that's where we stand after the first three games of this St. Louis series. We might as well go ahead and simulate the final game of this series live. We do get one person on injury out for a day or two. We'll just auto it and auto. Jeez, we're getting a lot of injured lists. And how interesting following that game, we get an offer immediately for Tristan McKenzie, starting pitcher off of the Blue Jays, 25 years old, 79 overall, B potential for Cole Tucker, who's right around the same, 26 years old, B potential 79. It is interesting because I guess they kind of need a shortstop. I mean, I don't know how much of an upgrade Cole Tucker will be. I guess on paper he's an upgrade. But starting pitcher-wise, Tristan McKenzie would certainly be an upgrade for us, I feel like, over JT Brubaker, which is interesting. Not that big of an upgrade, but certainly worth considering. I'm going to leave you guys on the hook to see whether we accept this deal or not going into the next episode, though. So make sure you guys stay tuned for the next episode to see what we do with this deal and potentially anything else we do leading up to the trade deadline. As always, I appreciate you guys tuning into the video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you guys have a good one.